Hey guys, Chris here from Chef Wannabe's Life, and today I'm going to bring you another update about my keratoconus and my cornea situation. The last time I updated you, I was about to go to the specialist, so if you want to hear what happened after that, keep watching. Alright guys, the day has come and gone that I went to the cornea specialist, and um, if you watched my previous keratoconus update, which I'll link in the description bar if you would like to watch it. I had been told I needed a cornea transplant by my regular optometrist, and so I was referred to a cornea specialist. So the day came, I went to the appointment. First I went and got my cast off and my stitches out. Yay! So we got there, and of course when you're nervous about an appointment, it seems like you wait for ever in the waiting room. So we waited, I got in, um, I was there a couple of hours, they did a bunch of tests and essentially once I met with the doctor and he did some looking and testing and measuring etc. He said, do you really need a transplant? Yes. He said, your, your regular doctor or your regular eye doctor and I disagree on the fact that it is like super emergent but it does need to be done so he said I, I know your apprehension about having it done and just your nervousness but he said if you want to do it right now like let's get it done if you want to wait a few months and see where you are in three months then we can do that. He said, um, as long as you are not putting yourself in a position to get an injury to your eye, I don't think that it will just naturally, spontaneously perforate. And the gardeners are here mowing the lawn. While my eyes were dilating, my husband and I talked about it and um, we just weren't sure about some things so we were gonna wait for him to come back in well, when he came back in he told me that another thing my doctor didn't know was that he had just made the decision to move back to where he's from because of family reasons and he's leaving August 1st so he said I wouldn't do the transplant for you anyway I would refer you to my partner because I'm I don't want to do a transplant and then just leave you high and dry which you know was fine after asking a few more questions about process and the recovery and etc., we just kind of came to the conclusion that as long as I wasn't or my eye wasn't in any imminent danger, that we would wait for three months and then I will see his partner. I already have an appointment scheduled and I will see where, where my eye is then. Did it progress? Did it you know, did it not get any worse? And then we'll decide again. Do we need to do this now? Can we wait three more months? So, like, I'm happy that I'm not having it done. My husband said, you don't seem very happy. You just seem kind of ambivalent. And I guess because I was so sure that it was going to have to be done, and soon, it wasn't that I was ambivalent. I just was so ready and I, I had prepared myself like so hard so it wasn't a letdown but it was like okay where do I go now because I came in here with no answers and I'm leaving with no answers and so I felt a bit um, kind of in limbo like where do I go from here so the news was good. It is not emergent. The, it, my eye is not in imminent danger, so that is good news. Definitely good news. I don't have to have the cornea transplant now. Absolutely good news. I do still have to have the transplant. I'm just not sure when. He also, I forgot, there's also more good news. Even though my regular eye doctor said that the transplant would simply be for the sole purpose of saving my physical eyeball. There would be no restoration of vision, no restoration of any muscle, um, kind of like tone, you know, muscle, I can't think of the word. There'd be no chance of it straightening my eye back out. 
My cornea specialist said he did believe he would be able to restore some vision, which in turn would restore the muscle tone in those eye muscles to try to bring my eye back to center. So that is good news too. So it was just, it was a whole bunch of like, just limbo, you know? So that is my update. Yeah, I'm in limbo. Just the fact that I know that my cornea will not spontaneously perforate is a huge weight off my shoulders because that is extremely painful, I'm told, and an extremely dire situation. So I am glad that that hopefully that won't be something that's that's facing me. So thank you all for keeping up with my keratoconus journey. Thank you for being part of my channel. I hope that you get some laughs. I hope that you learn some new recipes. I really appreciate that you're here. I'm sending my love to you all. Don't forget to subscribe. Talk to me in the comments. Let me know what you know about keratoconus, if you know anybody who has it, what their experience has been. I would love, just the more I can learn, the better for me. So, I will talk to you all soon, and remember, as always, the most important thing is to always eat good food. Bye, guys.